Hey everybody, Danny Ward here. Thanks for joining us. This week, I bring you to the 17th at Canterbury. We have an incredibly deep bunker, a bunker that puts the fear of God into so many people's minds. And we've got a special guest who's gonna show us exactly how to get out of these bunkers. Before we do, if you're new to the channel and this is one of your first videos, consider subscribing. And of course, if you haven't seen some of Peter's work, he does some fantastic coaching videos on his YouTube channel, which you can get access to in the description below. The guys coming into the bunker, big problems. They're struggling, they're thinning the golf ball mm -hmm. quite a bit. They're not really getting any height on their bunker shot, so they're unable to stop it and get obviously the elevation, particularly in a deep bunker like this. Yeah. What's, what's some of the problems you find when you're coaching people? Well, I think the first thing that I do try and get people to do is actually get a wedge which is going to suit them. Yep. Um, so just make sure that you are using a wedge with a good amount of bounce so you can actually enter the sand with the club and actually not worry about it digging Can you just it. explain a bit about bounce? What's... Yeah, so bounce angle, very, very simply. Uh, the bottom of the club, so the bottom of the sole, sits lower than the leading edge and the angle which is created between the ground, if the ground is perfectly flat like that, and the leading edge, that's the bounce angle. So basically when the club enters the sand, that leading edge doesn't dig in, it glides and actually comes out of the sand and then it just lifts the ball out on a carpet of sand rather than actually. So you're not hitting the ball in a bunker, you're hitting the sand. Yeah, in the sand. And um, so when you're talking about bounces, obviously different degrees of bounce, isn't yeah. there? And I know some of the guys that are going to be asking, what degree would you say is, is advisable for? I, I would always tend to go higher. Higher, higher is better. Higher, higher is being? Better. So 15 degrees, something okay. like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. At the kind of top end. You can go a lot lower than that. A lot of it depends on the conditions and what you're going to be using the club for. Yep. So if you are someone who plays a predominantly wet course, something like that, you know, a higher bounce would help you because the club, again, is not going to dig in even on the fairways. You see a lot of pros, they don't have loads of bounce because yep. they, you know, they're a Plain. lot better, frankly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so having a high amount of bounce really isn't something that should be avoided. It should be encouraged for many golfers. Fantastic. So, so getting into the shot, then how mm -hmm. do we? How do you get the uh, your clients to kind of start using that bounce correctly through the sand so we can start popping that ball up? So the first thing that many people struggle with, this, this is the one thing where I would say 80% of golfers can't quite figure out, certainly when they begin, is that they need to hit the sand first yep. before the ball. Because it's a bit of a weird concept, you know. If you're playing a bat and ball sport, you want the bat to hit the ball. Yeah, absolutely. Not in the bunkers you don't. It's, <laughs> not in the bunkers you don't, you want to be hitting the sand. So what I tend to do is get people to do a little bit of a drill. So just a very simple line drill. Yep. So a line which indicates the ball position where it'll be in the stance. Uh, depending on how much you want to open the face, depends on how much you open the stance. Uh, there are different ways of actually playing bunker shots with square stances and all the rest of it, but I'm the, the simpler the better. In yeah, respect. absolutely. So you want to be, I've got a 60 degree uh, wedge here. So I'm just going to open up the club face just a little bit. Now when you open up the club face, that's obviously going to alter your aim. So that's when you start to pull the body around to the left hand side. I want to see the ball position just forward of centre, and then I want to see a little bit of weight on that left side as well. Okay. That combined with a bit of a quick wrist hinge, that's going to allow you to get down and enter the sand. So you kind of want the club, in a sense, from here's the ball off the inside left heel. Yeah, just the inside left heel. 60-70% on your left side? Yeah, I, yep. yeah, about 60%. Okay, right. A lot of it depends on what the lie is, how much you want to get the club down into the sand. Um, and also with ball position as well, you've got to counter in the fact that you are opening stance. So in relation to your swing centre, that's going to change. And yep. that comes with a little bit of practice. But okay. this line drill is basically, ball position is going to be centre, uh, forward, sorry. A little bit of weight on that left side. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna work my way to the ball, hit five or six shots where I'm swinging up and I'm trying to get my club to enter just before the line and then it's gonna exit after the line. What do you see with a lot of amateurs? What do they do instead of that? What's the biggest problem? The, the biggest problem is just trying to help the ball up in the air. Yeah. You tend to, <laughs> amateurs tend to fall into two gaps if they're struggling out of bunkers. They'll either help the ball up in the air, so a flick of the wrist trying to get it out of the sand. Yeah. Or they'll understand the concept of getting it into the sand, but they won't apply any speed. So it'll be there and it'll be... And that, yeah, that's, that's a common one. And just kind of wonder why it's not popping out. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got to apply the speed and so it's, you, it's difficult. So you, it's, it's, re, it's also requiring a bit of confidence, isn't it? They've got to, you know, so yeah. how, would you, how would they develop that? You know, is it, would you practice hitting shots into the sand without hitting balls initially, just to I, kind of get a feeling? Yeah, this, that's what this line is really good yeah. for. You know, it gets them used to actually entering the sand and hitting the sand. And to be fair with bunkers, because people do get quite scared of them, yeah. I, I tend to give them a choice. I say, well, okay, if you're going to hang back and flick it, you're going to thin it. Yep. And if you don't accelerate, you're going to fat it. Yep. So does that sound like a good idea to you? And <laughs> no one's going to say yes. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm like, well, hit the sand before and accelerate through. 
Perfect. And it kind of it kind of just jars them out of it a little bit because a lot of people approach bunkers with fear, but you hear the commentators say all the time, you hear professional players say all the time, sometimes they want to be in a bunker. Absolutely. It's not a difficult shot. If you get a good line, you get a good bunker. So show us, show us, what, show us the kind of the depth of sand that you'd want to be taking in a, in a bunker. <laughs> so we'll, tr- we'll ignore this one. No, that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I want to be taking, I just want to be taking something like, it's kind of a... It's a nice you, sound that as well, isn't it? Yeah, I always kind of like to picture it it's kind of like a 20 pound note, something yep. like that, that type of sign. Yep. And I don't like to take too much sand, yep. but that's, I'm, I'm a relatively good bunker player. I've practiced, I, I know the depths of sand that I want to be taking. Yep. You know? I would always recommend that quite a few players probably take a little bit more sand to begin with while they get used yep. to it. And then just try and get used to more of that kind of enter and skim. I think that's a, so, I think that's a great drill, yeah. Yeah, and it just, it just gets people just used to just walking kind of up the line. See, that would have been a little bit clean. That'd be clear, yeah. Walking up the line and actually getting the idea of just bottoming it out before, skimming it through. But what, I, what I really love about um, this exercise um, here as well is like you've, you can see the depth of sand you're getting into. Absolutely, yeah. And the fact there's no ball there, you're not kind of, um, you're not seeing the ball flying over the green or, or leaving it in front of you, so you're not losing confidence. I think it's a great place to start, isn't it? Just to yeah, kind of build 100%. that confidence into what you should be doing through the impact area. Yeah, it's great. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Good pr- practice wins, you see. Yeah. Easy, sh- easy shots in golf to practice wins. It not? is, it is. So kind of walking them through that. So let's have a look, let's see, let's see it in action. Yeah, and then when you get it set up, it's the same thing, it's just focusing on that sand. Again, just a little bit before, that little bit of weight forward, and just kind of skimming it through. There you go. And then Pops just allowing it, to, allowing it to come out. And you can kind of see there. Absolutely, look at this. Entered, entered. That kind of size, um, because it is it is difficult. It's, it's a difficult one to get through your head to, to actually hit the sand before the ball yeah. and keep the acceleration up. But that's where that bounce angle comes in. It will come out. Fantastic. It will come out. Just to summarise mm-hmm. there, Peter. So we got ball just inside the left heel. Yep. Weight maybe 60, 70 percent on the um, lead foot. Maybe yep. aiming a bit. I aiming a little bit off to the left hand side, depending on how much you want to open the face. Fantastic. So we're opening the face, maybe just a 20 degrees, 30 degrees. Yeah, just a touch. I don't okay. like to kind of lay it flat, but it, again, if it's a very close shot, then I'll lay it open more, yep. go open your stance a touch more. Fantastic. And then really, if we then just look at drawing a line in the sand from that position there, all we're going to do is try to get the club swinging in and just taking... <laughs> not a great place to stand no, by me. No, I no, am, not, not a great place to stand. <laughs> but just taking a nice slither on both sides. Yeah. Okay, so we don't want guys coming in like this. Nope. And obviously we don't want them flicking like this. We're just gonna try and take a nice slither. I won't work up the line just in case I, I cover you with sand, but <laughs> I hope you get the idea, guys. This is a real, real common problem with so many of my clients struggling to get the ball up in the air. I suggest what you do initially is you just practice getting the contact in the sand first before you start hitting golf balls, and then gradually introduce the balls as you go along. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, please share it with some people who need some help with their bunkers. And a massive thank you to Peter for coming oh, to Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been brilliant. And look, he's got all his details of his YouTube channel and all the bits and pieces in the description below. But until next week, have a great golfing week.